cast under the big platforms off the back are called um, hatch lid platforms. So the lids that sit on the deck of the ship, where there are containers underneath, we have to remove those to get to those containers. Go in terms of a, uh, it's like a number sequence, and what container they are having to pick up with confirmation of the number. with the vehicle booking system is that we work to 30 minute windows. Our target is to turn a minimum of 80% of the trucks in under 30 minutes. And we're currently sort of achieving turn times in the region of about 20 to 22 minutes. And that's up and around the 90% range. We work 24 seven, um, the only day we close, and we might just stop here, Raymond. Yep, that'll be cool. Um, and I'll point out what you're sort of looking at. It's quite a lot of activity on the on the truck grid today, which is really good. Um, but we work 24-7. Um, the only day we're closed is for Christmas. Typically Monday through to Friday are the busiest days of the week, and that's from 5 a.m. till about 5 p.m. Um, it's what we call our peak time. And that's when a lot of the importer premises are open so that the container trucks can access. So the driver will have actually registered their details at a kiosk um, out on the out external truck grid. That is indicating, and it flags in our container system, that um, the truck driver is on window for their booking. It then gives them a PIN number, which they put in through the front gate as we came through before. And then they'll drive down these one of these two lanes on the right-hand side of the bus and there's a further kiosk which just verifies that they are really close to the truck grid and then it actually flags a lane for them to come into. And you'll see uh, a couple of the trucks, the one up ahead of us was reversing in. All of the trucks have to reverse into the grid, which I really admire the skill of the truck drivers. Um, it's not an easy task and bus drivers too, but you won't have to reverse today, Raymond, I promise. Um, and once they go in, they then, if they've got a container on the truck, they'll walk around the truck and undo their twist locks. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. That means that um, the container can be lifted off the back of the trailer. On China, on fully built up on the back of a ship. Um, the ship's ballast was, was uh, that is, that, that sort of, the water that it was carrying was released from the ship to lift it up to the height of the wharf deck. And the cranes were literally rolled out on rails. Each crane weighs about 2,100 ton. You wouldn't want one on your foot. Um, quite a bit sort of bigger than the other cranes we're going to go under. What is really unique with these ones is that they can actually lift four 20-foot containers in one lift. They're called quad lift cranes. Slightly more complex operation because it means you've got to get your four boxes all lined up correctly or it could lift two 40-footers in one lift. The other element with these, or significance with these cranes, is that they can go out to 21 container rows wide on a vessel. So a lot of the newer, bigger container vessels being built these days are wider, not necessarily longer. And to give a really good little illustration of that, the vessel we're gonna go alongside called the Antwerp Bridge is about 294 meters long uh, we had a vessel in two weeks ago that was 255 metres long, so it was shorter, but it was 40 metre beam, talking about the width here of the ship, and this beam of this vessel is 32. Now this vessel can handle 5,000 TEU. TEU is a 20 foot equivalent, and the vessel we had two weeks ago could handle 6,000 TEU. So they're getting wider and have the ability to stack more containers on deck. 
few features as you look out the left of the bus um, with the big cranes we passed under. The big platforms off the back are called um, hatch lid platforms. So the lids that sit on the deck of the ship where there are containers underneath, we have to remove those to get to those containers. We put those lids on those platforms so that we actually don't lose operating space on the ground. Other terminals will tend to put the lids on the ground at the back of the crane or between the working legs. And I say working legs because you'll see coming up on the left and ahead of you, that's where we do all the, uh, the operation and the exchange between bringing the container in from the yard and then lifting it on and off the ship. Another feature which is really unique to us here at Port of Auckland, um, driven from a safety perspective, are these platforms, they're called um, lashing platforms that we're going to drive under. And I promise Raymond the bus won't hit it height-wise. Um, you'll see a couple of our stevedoring colleagues, they're standing there what happens is that when containers are coming off the deck of the ship, they'll have the twist locks in them. And we need to remove those twist locks before they go out into the yard. So those containers get landed onto this platform. The stevedores will come out once the containers land, undo the twist locks, put them into ship's bins, and then the crane will lift the container onto the ground for one of the straddles, such as number 22, um, or then come in and pick it up. You can wave to the guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're doing well. So it's it, it's a little bit uh, like a choreography here. You know, there are strict rules around straddles entering in under the crane. They can only do it when the crane is stationary or the crane is actually operating on the ship. They're not allowed to come in um, under what's called a suspended load. You can see on the left hand side this particular crane is lifting a 40 footer. Um, I think it's a 40 footer and not 220s. No it's 220s so it's in twin lift mode. So in this case it's lifting two 20 foot containers and we'll put them onto the ship um, below deck because we've actually got the lids sitting up on the lid platform at the back and they'll go into cell guides which are guides that the ship has to sort of help guide the container down. Here's an example of a lid on the left hand side here. We've actually put this one on the ground and I think it's because um, we're doing some trainee crane driving. Um, but you can just see the size of them. Both those things would be weighing about 30 to 40 tonnes. Up on the, the left hand side, the, the main building, you can see there's a control tower type structure. Um, that is actually where we do have a lot of our planners and controllers who are directing the straddles around the yard, giving them their next jobs. That is all done through a computer system um, and within the straddle, the driver actually has a screen that tells them where to go in terms of a, uh, it's like a number sequence and what container they are having to pick up with confirmation of the number. Each container has a unique numbering system you can see on these containers in front of us. It often has an, an alpha uh, an alpha reference which is four and then it's seven digits. On the left, again, more reefer towers. Um, so all of these containers here are plugged in. We're monitoring these remotely in terms of their temperature and to make sure they're working. If there is a problem with it, we will contact the shipping line's nominated technician who will come down and, um, and look to repair the container. Get a good view of the Antwerp bridge on the right-hand side. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it is by name, but um, I don't know where it's registered. So this ship actually arrived um, last evening, and she's due to sail later today, and she'll do about a 2,000 container exchange. That's a mix of obviously imports coming off, there could be some exports, domestic freight going on, and empty containers as well. So 
in the blink of an eye, we've come out of the container terminal and we're now in an area that we call multi-cargo. This is actually, unlike the terminal, where we have our own staff um, who do the loading and the discharging, here at multi-cargo, it's actually third-party stevedores who contract direct with the shipping company. Freiburg Wharf, which is the area that uh, we've just passed on the right, is normally used for bulk cargoes. And um, that would be commodities like sand. Um, we do actually have imported coal coming through here, which is discharged direct off the vessel into the big green bins you might be able to see on the right hand side um, called hoppers and then that is discharged direct into truck so the coal doesn't actually touch the wharf deck um, we do bulk steel break bulk steel um, as some of the uh, bulk commodities coming through here it's a little bit quiet down here today which is unusual um, but it also gives you an opportunity to get a, get a good view of what's happening here in the port. We've got a number of warehouse facilities on the left-hand side. Um, the building here, Shed 2, is leased to Whittings Group. They bring in product um, which they uh, sell to retailers. We are going to do a major development on the left-hand side and build a new engineering workshop, and that is because the blue machines that you see there on the left are our automated straddles that we will be converting over to manual straddles. They're taller machines than what we're currently operating with and therefore we need to build a workshop to handle that extra height. On the right hand side uh, there's a vessel there uh, it would be exchanging containers and steel. That strange looking machine with the claw like red arm that is actually uh, a big vacuum cleaner for want of a better term it's um it reaches into the hold of a cement vessel and sucks the cement out which is then pumped underground into the wholesome dome here on the left hand side so that is the way that wholesome they bring in their cement from asia and it is pumped into there they put it through a process where they mix it with some other items and then the tankers come in and take it direct to market. This big concrete, I call it a sarcophagus, <laughs> is the Golden Bay um, cement facility. Similar concept to Wholesome, but they're bringing it in on their own vessel from Golden Bay up north. And that berth's just on the right-hand side of the Toyota building here and is pumped in. And then similar Golden Bay trucks come in through a completely sealed environment, gets pumped into the trucks and goes out to the market. And we see about five to 700,000 tonne of cement coming in each year through those two facilities, which is mainly servicing the infrastructure needs of the Auckland region. Left-hand side here, the blue building, is our customs inspection facility. Uh, you can see there's some containers outside. So customs will actually flag interest in, in containers and ask us to position them down there. Um, it's a really important part of New Zealand security, border security, is that process. And just adjacent to that was the Tinley Street Gate, which is actually our main uh, point of entry and exit for the multi-cargo area. We've come on to Bledisloe Wharf. Um, here on the right-hand side, you have our car handling facility. It's a rel relatively new building, about six years, seven years old now. Purpose-built for um, the movement of cars on and or in and out of the building it's got ramps on either side so you can get good flow of, of traffic we can handle about two and a half thousand cars in there and what's really unique is yeah. when we designed this we wanted it to be a legacy for the city so we've got these hanging gardens on the south side um, automatic sensor watering we had to choose special plants that didn't attract insects and that's uh, from our MPI, Ministry of Primary Industries requirement. On the left here, I hope you're not getting whiplash going backwards and forwards, but you've got Marsden Wharf, of course, rather infamous for the Rainbow Warrior, and adjacent to that is Captain Cook. These are still working wharfs here at the port, which are all for the car trade. One sort of 
common perception is that uh, cars are here and they're parked up for days on end. Our average import dwell time, which is the time measured from when it comes off a vessel to the time it goes out the gate for the vehicle trade is about 1.9 days. So we have about 300,000 cars coming through this facility each year. Last year, I think, financial year was about 295,000 and we'll be pretty close to that again this year. Whole mix, as you can see, of used, new cars, there's vans. Um, it's not just cars per se, it's actually tractors, tra tractors, trucks. Uh, we have helicopters, buses, all sorts of things, which um, Auckland and New Zealand need. So the Toyota building on the left, um, for those of you who might know the history and, and have a distant memory, this actually used to be a freezing works down here. Mm -hmm. So there was an abattoir and processing of meat. There was a big conveyor belt basically from the Golden Bay facility into the Toyota building where carcass meat was frozen down and loaded onto ships. So, oh how times have changed. Now we're going to go back out through the Tinley Street gate and then back along Key Street. Unfortunately, we don't have the ability to show you Sparky. Um, Sparky sits alongside that green building over to the front left hand side. She is there at the moment. Um, she is bright green, similar to the colour of the building. And she's actually the world's first fully electric tug. We're really proud of Sparky. Um, and it, and it really goes 